The other part is exporting the item list and exporting the price list. So I'm going to go here into file. I'm going to go into utilities, export, list to IIF. And then I'm going to select um, item list. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to call this old item list. Okay. There, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize QuickBooks and I'm going to open Excel. Okay. And with a blank screen here, uh, Excel open, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm just going to grab this old item list file that I saved on my desktop and I'm going to grab it and drop it into Excel. So once I do that, my Excel should open up the spreadsheet version of the IIF file. One thing, keep in mind, all this stuff, I'm going to mark it here red. I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need to mess with any of this stuff. And then here, when my items end, at this point here, where my sales tax, uh, my, my sales tax and my subtotals start all these things here, I don't, I don't need to mess with either, so I'm gonna mark them red. So all these things are red I don't need. The stuff that I do need is this part, the part that actually contains the item information. So I'm just gonna copy that part, right? All my inventory parts and my non-inventory parts. I'm gonna go ahead and create here a new table, and I'm gonna paste this. Now, just to simplify things, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these columns that contain extra data that we're not gonna be dealing with because right now we're 100% concentrated in just dealing with the uh, price and the cost. So I'll delete all the stuff here. I don't need any other stuff here. So let's say, for example, there are two scenarios where this is useful. Scenario number one, it's I need to adjust uh, the price and the cost in Excel uh, based on maybe a particular formula. Like for example, if I wanted to multiply all my costs times three, just to give you an example, I would just use a formula like this, bring all this down, right? And then I can just uh, copy and paste that into, into costs, right? Like so I can delete this. So now I have my new costs updated into, uh, into the Excel spreadsheet, okay? Then let's say the price would, would be maybe one time, one, and a half times the cost, so that's 50% markup. So I can put equals, right, one times 1.5, and then I can bring all that stuff down. So basically, my, my new price, whoops, that would be 1.5 times cost. Okay, that would have been yet helpful. So I'll drag that down. So now I have a new price level and a new cost based on specific formulas. And then what I can do is I can just take my price and cost information. Again, leaving the order of my items, leaving all that stuff intact, copy this, go back into my IIF, and just paste over it like this, right? Leaving all the other stuff untouched. Um, I can just get rid of this sheet here. I don't need this anymore. And then I can just save right over it. So I'll just click on save, okay? And then I can close this. And then let me go back into uh, QuickBooks here. And then I have, you see, these are all my old prices that are here. These are my old prices. So when I go to File, Utilities, Import, IIF Files, and I go down and select my old item list and click on Open, you're going to see that all these prices are going to change on the fly. Okay. Now, the other part that I mentioned earlier is, you know, what if I, I'm not going to use, uh, this is really the useful piece of, of doing it in Excel. What if I am not going to use, uh, you know, formulas like, like the way I did? What if I have another spreadsheet um, that contains uh, prices uh, that I got from a vendor or something like that? So what you would have to do is do the same technique, but then use a v, v lookup formula. So you would have to, and again, I, I don't have time to go over that and I, it wasn't my intention, but you could run a VLOOKUP formula with another uh, price list with a technique that I showed you by separating just the, the, the name, the price, and the cost, updating those prices, and repasting them back in there. This is actually the single fastest way to update your price list into uh, QuickBooks if you have to involve Excel. However, there is a built-in tool to uh, modify the prices that I want to show you. It's actually a really great tool and very under your life tool, which is here in the inventory um, menu. And then we go into change item prices. Okay, so I'm going to go to inventory, change item prices. Okay, and then I'm going to select here inventory part. 
So in here, I'm going to see a, a column for my current prices. Okay. And now these are my current sales prices, not my costs. Um, and I'm going to hit mark all. And I could just increase my prices, let's say, by 25% very easily by clicking here where it says adjust prices by. I'll type 25. Make sure I put percent. If I put 0.25, it's going to raise it by 25 cents. Maybe that's not what I want. So I'm going to go by 25% based on current price. And then I click on adjust. And then you're going to see that all my prices are now going to be increased. Okay. Based on my current price. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. So I'm going to go into any of my item list. Let's say I'm going to go into this one. I have now a new sales price. Now let's assume that I want to make a change in sales price based on cost. So for example, I wanted to use that massive a change on cost. And what I do want is I want, let's say, 25% uh, markup over cost. So technically speaking, the new price for this would be 1.25. The new sales price for this should be 0 .67, uh, 0 0.675 which is 25% markup. So the way I would do that, I'm just showing you as an example, by doing that, I'm gonna go into inventory, change item prices, select all my inventory parts, click on mark all, then hit this drop down here where it says based on current price, no, make it based on unit cost, okay? So and then I'm gonna put here 1.25, okay? Uh, actually, no, not 1.25. 0.25, it's not 0.25, 25%, sorry. This one you have to actually put a percent sign. So I'm going to adjust the price based on 25%, right, uh, of the unit cost, okay? So when I click on adjust, we're gonna see all the new uh, prices based on unit cost, and we're gonna see my new unit price went up to 68 cents, and my other example was 67.5, but that's that's about right. If if this is if this has rounding, you know we can actually do uh, rounding, or we can actually uh, you know tell it you know up, you know how many uh, decimals I want. So if if I go actually I have to go up to two decimals. So I put zero one. This will do. Um, I can just select I want it to the nearest cent, uh, plus or minus let's say you know ten cents or something like that. And then once I hit adjust, the system will. Um, this is, one cent, sorry. The system will adjust uh, the rounding and tell you, you know, the most that it will push up or the most that it will push down. But the most it will do is two. This is another criticism I have that the most it will do is uh, is is two decimals. I actually don't like the fact that we can't uh, do more than two decimals. Sometimes that's that's necessary. And the other criticism I have about the screen, again, you have to just deal with it, is that I don't get a column for cost. I only get columns for unit price. So it would be really neat to see the cost so we can actually compare it. So unfortunately, that's just a deficiency.